came together in God's house to praise him. Hallelujah, and to worship him. Hallelujah. How many of you know the word says, if we draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to us. Hallelujah. Anybody believe that? Hallelujah. Anybody need the Lord to be near to you? Hallelujah, I do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We invite your presence in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. And we draw close to you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. We believe that in your presence is the fullness of joy. Hallelujah. And at your right hand, there are treasures forevermore. So we come close to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for pulling us close to you, God. Hallelujah. And we'll respond in faith, Lord God, believing that if we draw nigh to you, that you'll come close to us, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for being a loving father that desires to have your children close to you.
Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord in this place because he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Lord God. Just want to say good morning to a cup of salvation family. I love you to life. Amen. And I, I pray that you are, are doing well in this season of snowstorms. Amen. I, I don't remember the last time we've had uh, uh, snowstorms back to back to back. Amen. In North Carolina. If anybody does, I'd like to know because it's been three week years in a row. Amen. And I guess like the season that we're in where this season is is unprecedented. Maybe the weather this time of year in North Carolina is unprecedented as well. So I just thank the Lord for you this morning. Thank the Lord for those who might be uh, looking at the broadcast via YouTube. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's dive right into the word of the Lord. We're going to be looking at the gospel of St. Luke, chapter 14, verses 16 through 24. The gospel of St. Luke, chapter 14, verses 16 through 24. And it reads as thus. Then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were invited, come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were abiding shall taste of my supper. And for a, a topic this morning, I want to speak to you from the topic of may I be excused. May I be excused. Go with me in prayer. Our Father, now God, we thank you and we give you the glory and the honor and the praise for such a time as this. We thank you, Lord God, for your word, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the heroes, oh God. Give the heroes, oh God, an ear to hear, oh God, and a heart to receive, Lord God, that their lives might be changed even now, Lord God. Help them, Lord God, not to be distracted, Lord God, in their homes, Lord God, doing other things, Lord God, other than hearing what thus saith the Lord in this hour, oh God, because you never know when you're going to need what thus saith the Lord from the man of God. Father, we give you all glory, we give you all honor, and we give you all praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. May I be excused. We can all come up with excuses when we don't want to do something. We can all find something we believe to be more important when we don't want to do something. Because I have learned that people do what they want to do. And this was the case with, the, with three of the Jewish brethren who were invited to eat at the table of the Lord. For verse 18 says this, and they were, and they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, 
have me excused. Thus, the first excuse was business related. And how many times has a man missed God chasing a dollar? How many times has a man missed the worship of God chasing money? Missed God chasing a career? I have known too many men that were masters in the boardroom and chumps in the bedroom because they would not allow God to show them how to lead about a wife. They would not allow God to show them how to love their wives as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for, for it. They would not allow God to show them how to bring up their children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Neither would they submit to a man or a woman of God that would even give them the opportunity to be taught how to lead about a wife and how to lead about a family. We understand that we all need wealth to survive and thrive in America. So I'm not telling you not to make money, make as much as you can. But it shouldn't become what we love the most. Because 1 Timothy 6 and 10 says this, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You see, in this climate, businesses are trying to get everything out of us that they can. Through many, though many are, are working from home, they are working harder and longer hours. But let me encourage you to leave something for God in your day. Find ways to get into his presence and, and decompress via worship, via praise, via reading the word of the Lord, via meditating on the word of God. Don't leave it all at the job and have nothing left to give to God because the Bible says that all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have thy, give, have thy given thee. You see, if God didn't give us the job, we would have, no, we would have nothing to give back to God. If, if God didn't give us the strength to get up and go to the job, we wouldn't have a job. If God didn't give us our life, our health, and our strength to get up and go to that job, we would have nothing to give back to God. But too often, that's what we will do. We will work overtime on the job and have no time for God. We'll give all of ourselves to the man and have nothing to give to the man at the end of our day. And I encourage you to find a way to, to even at the end of your day, men and women of God, to have something left to give to God by way of prayer, by, by way of praise, by way of worship, by way of meditating on the word of God. And so what we see is that the first excuse from the young Jewish brother was, listen, I, it was a, 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 an excuse in reference to a business deal. I need to go and see about some land that I purchased. Verse 19 says, and another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. The second excuse was a man who wanted to go home and try out his new toys. Try out that yoke of oxen. You see, many folk would rather play with their favorite thing or do their favorite thing than come to church and fellowship with the saints. They would rather go test out their favorite toy than to worship God at the set aside time given to come and worship him. They would rather play with their toys than, than to worship the giver of the toys. You see, to be excused to go try out the oxen or to try out your new toy will be no different than me telling the Lord, instead of standing to minister the word on Sunday morning, God, I want to try out my new weight bench instead. Instead of standing to, to minister the word on Sunday morning or to be in place for, for Bible study or, or the various other uh, uh, services that we have, I make a decision that, you know, God, I just bought me some, some new handguns. And, and I think instead of being in the house of the Lord on Sunday, I, I'd rather be at the gun range trying out 
my new weapons. May I be excused from fellowshipping with you so I can go try out my new toy. Listen, you do that on your time and not on God's time. In fact, truth be told, it's all God's time. He just loves us enough to allow us to use uh, 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 and enjoy the time that he gives us in various ways. Listen, let me put it like this. Don't let your stuff get in the way of God's stuff. Don't let your business get in the way of God's business. Give all your business to God. Cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. So if you take care of God's stuff, he will take care of your stuff. The Lord don't mind you having toys, my brothers and sisters. Have as many as you can afford without going into debt over them, but don't let toys have you to the degree that it competes with your loyalty to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, because he will be number one. He will not be number two. Praise the Lord. He will not be number two. For the Bible tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto them. So the second excuse that the young Jewish brother made was, I need to go and try out my new toys. And verse 20 says, and another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Finally, the last guest says, I have taken a wife, so I cannot come. So his excuse was family related. Now, I'm sure that as a young Jewish brother, he was reminded of Deuteronomy 24 and 5, where it says, when a man hath taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war, neither shall he be charged with any business, but he shall be free at home one year and shall cheer up his wife, which he hath taken. Now, no doubt this man seems to be more justified than the others, but we must keep things in his proper perspective in that we are to love the Lord thy God above all else. We are to love the Lord thy God with all of our heart, with all of thy soul, with all of thy mind, with all of thy strength. If any man loves mother and father more than me, he's not worthy of me. If any man loves son or daughter more than me, he's not worthy of me. If any man does not take up his cross and follow after me, he's not worthy of me. Thus the Lord desires to be first, because if we learn, if we learn how to love the creator, if you will, the creator would teach us how to love our wives, would teach us how to love our children. But if we make a decision that we don't want to be invited to the table of the Lord and we make excuses about being in place like we're supposed to be, then how will we ever know how to love our wives as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for? How will we ever know how to raise our children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord? I will tell you, man, I thought for, I thought for a fact I knew how to love my wife as a man and as a husband. But then I was, uh, apostle said to me, you, you need to learn how to love your wife through Christ. He gave me no instruction beyond that. I had to go and sit at the table of the Lord and figure out how to do that. And it brought forth a new love. It brought forth a love that I've never known. It brought forth, uh, I, 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 no, I've never knew love like this before. It took my wife and I to a place where we had never been because I made a decision to, to go when the invitation came forth from the Lord Jesus Christ to go and sit at the table and be taught how to love my wife and be taught how to love my family and be taught how to love my brothers and, and my sisters in Christ. And so verse 21 says, so that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry. Now that, this tells us how God feels about excuses, don't it? 
being angry, said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out and go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were invited shall taste of my supper. Like the Jews in this text, there are a lot of people in the church excusing or leaving the table of the Lord for multiple reasons, not the least being the current climate that we're in. I want to share with you a conversation that I had with a colleague on my job a couple weeks ago. I was talking to a colleague at work last week, and he began to tell me why, after 35 years of ministry, he decided to leave the faith. He said the past year and a half convinced him that there is not much difference between those that are saved and those that are unsaved. He said the white, evang the white evangelical movement has convinced him that they are more concerned about the flag than they are the cross. And the January 6, 2021 insurrection was proof of that, where you had nooses at the Capitol building standing next to crosses. He was also convinced that in the COVID era, most pastors are more interested in self-preservation than in the preservation of the saints by encouraging mass numbers of people to come together in the church and worship without any real safety precautions. However, he, he didn't leave the black community out. He said that the black church was more concerned about black lives matter than what really matters to Christ. So nobody is really at the foot of the cross. They just pretend like they are. Thus, he says to me, Christianity is broken and I want no part of it. Now, the truth is, is I told him Christianity is not broken. He's broken. And I don't know all that you've been through. I, I can hear your frustration. I can feel your pain. Um, I can empathize with you. But listen, Christianity is not broken and has never been. Man is broken. And, and, and man has, in this season, especially those who say that they love the Lord, have been somewhat of a bad example as to what Christ looks like. So I tried to get him to come back around. I, I tried to get him to come back to the table of the Lord. I, I tried to get him uh, to, to recommit his, his life to Christ, but to no avail. To no avail. And I said all that to say, there are many that are asking the master, can I be excused to go and do something else instead of serving you? There are many leaving the church in this season for a number of reasons, but God is not sitting around pouting over those who would leave. He's simply calling out. He's simply going out and calling those that may be disenfranchised, that may be rejected by society, the halt, the maim, the blind, the lame, even the Gentiles to come forth and be invited to sit at the table of the Lord. And at this table, it's not just about physical food. It's not just about providing for our physical. At this table, he's sharing with us uh, uh, the, the spiritual things. He's sharing with us uh, uh, what our calling is. He's sharing with us what our purpose for living is. He's, he's sharing um, with, with us the things that, that we have been called to do. He's sharing with us and encouraging us to become laborers in his vineyard. And God doesn't want to hear excuses about why we can't get it done, why we can't be in place, why you can't serve like you're supposed to. He simply wants to know, will you serve without excuse? 
because we already see what excuses mean to God. They mean nothing. In fact, it moved him to anger. In fact, it moved him to, to going out and inviting those in that would desire to be a part of the kingdom of God, that would desire to be uh, invited and, and be a part uh, of the master's table and be a part of the feast that God is calling us forth. And that feast is providing for the whole man, for body, for soul, and for spirit. If, 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 if the invitation was all about the physical, everybody would be running. If the invitation was, was God calling forth men to say, if you come to the table, I have a million dollars for you. The table would be full. The table would be overflowing. But the fact that God is calling people to the table and saying, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord. There are a whole lot of brothers and sisters that's just not interested because he's calling folk to the table and telling them to be converted a whole lot of people are, are not interested because he's calling people to the table and, and telling you to turn your heart to him and, and come out of the sin that you're in. A whole lot of people are no longer interested. And in fact, as I said earlier, those that have been in ministry for 35 plus years have made a decision to walk away from our Lord and our Savior. Simply by, may I be excused? Because check this out now. God, is, God is, is, is not a trespassing God. If you ask God, may I be excused from what God is asking you to do or calling you to do, he's going to allow you to be excused. Because he told us now, Joshua told us, he said, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. He said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so if you decide that you're going to make all types of excuses about why you can't serve the Lord, about why you can't obey what the man or the woman of God that's leading you is asking you to do. If you're going to make excuses, God will let you go. You, you, you don't have to be invited. Somebody will take up the slack and step into the place that you were called and the work that you were called to do and take up the slack and do just that. Because if God can use a jackass, surely he can use you and me. Hallelujah. In a brief accounting of, of the, the call of, of Moses, when God called Moses to be the deliverer for Israel. Moses had that same mentality, if you will, of may I be excused. In other words, he, he really didn't want to do what God had called him to do, and, and he tried to talk his way out of it, and, and I'm thankful that God didn't receive it because had God received all of the excuses that that Moses brought forth when he called him to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, we wouldn't be talking about Moses today. So let's, let's go through a brief accounting of those excuses, starting with the Exodus 3, 11 and 12. It says, And Moses said unto God, Who am I, that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. So Moses' first excuse was trying to convince God that he wasn't the one to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. But listen, if God has called you to it, he will see you through it. If God has called you to it, he will see you through it. Listen at his reply when, when, when Moses said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? Verse 12 says, and the Lord said, certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. You shall serve God upon this mountain. He's trying to tell him, brother, you're not alone. If I call you to do a work for me, I've already equipped you 
with the things that you need to do the work, but I've equipped you with the most important thing, and that's my presence. But let's go on. Exodus 4, 1 through 3 says this, And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him again, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. So the second excuse or the second complaint was simply this. They won't believe. You see, the Lord was trying to show him they may not believe you initially, but listen, they will believe the miracles, the signs, and the wonders that, that I work through your hands, Moses, that I work through that rod, Moses, that I work through those plagues, Moses. They may not believe you initially when you open your mouth, but when they see the works and the miracles and the signs that I'm going to do through you, two million plus people are going to get behind you and follow you into the wilderness. And finally, in, in Exodus 4, 10 through 17, here was the third excuse. It reads as thus, Exodus 4, 10 through 17. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech and of, and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb or deaf or the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. And the truth of the matter is, y'all, that should have been enough, right, for Moses. But verse 13 says, but Moses said, O oh my Lord, send I pray thee by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. In other words, I ain't the one. Here we go again. And verse 14 says, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of God. And thou shalt take his rod in thine hand wherewith thou shalt do signs. In other words, what Moses is saying, okay, if you somehow believe you can't speak well, I'll let uh, Aaron speak for you, but you, you will speak through him as he speaks on your behalf. So the third excuse he used was, man, I, I'm not an eloquent speaker. I, I don't speak well. And, and how many times have, have we heard that in the body when we ask someone, you know, to, to share a testimony? You know, and we're not even asking somebody to preach, you know, just share your testimony, just share this or share that, because we believe God is going to do something with that for this body. You know, if we if we ask you to do such a thing, you know, it, we're, we're not asking you to move you out of your comfort zone as much as we are asking you that it might be a blessing not only to you, but a blessing to this body. Listen, had, had God received those, those excuses and complaints from Moses, huh, we wouldn't be talking about him today. And so even Moses was saying, Father, may I be excused. And so as I'm about to close, what, what excuses have you made to justify not doing what God has called you to do? Yeah. Yeah. What excuses have you made to justify not doing what God has called you to do? Thus, the overwhelming evidence that God is not interested in excuses lies before us in the text. 
when God asks you to do something, whether in your prayer time or from the man or woman of God that's leading you, don't make excuses about why you can't do it. Just obey. If you got questions, I can understand that. But if the Lord is, is asking you to do it, just obey because it's going to be for your good. And he's already equipped you to do the work. He's already prepared to see you through it because he lives on the inside of you in the person of the Holy Spirit. And, and though Moses made all types of excuses trying to squirm his way out of such a responsibility, the end result was he did what God said. And we all need to do what God said minus the complaints or the excuses because God knows what he put in you. You see, many men have attempted to excuse themselves from the work of God. And in his sovereignty, he has allowed many to miss the blessings of God as he did with the Jewish brothers who decided to excuse themselves from the work of the Lord. He said, those won't, they won't be invited again. At some point, God will turn you over, man, to, to a reprobate mind when you continue not to listen, when you continue not to obey, when you continue not to follow the leadership that's, that's standing before you and do, as Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. At some point, he'll turn you over to a reprobate. And so in his sovereignty, he allowed those brothers to, to miss out. But in his sovereignty, he kept pushing Moses. He kept pressing Moses. He kept asking, you know, answering Moses' questions as Moses was trying to excuse himself from what God has called him to do. Let me encourage you, don't be that guy or that girl. Don't be that person because you know what? It might look like you're winning now by walking away from what God has called you to do. But listen, it never pans out and never turns out good in the end. So at the end of the day, it's, it's best that, that we obey God and not make excuses as to why we can't. Because in the text in, in Luke 14, it says that, the master got angry and had his servant go out and call others that others might be invited to the table because those brothers would never be invited again. Let us who know our God do what God said. Let us who know our God not make excuses as if something else is more important than the work of the Lord. Let me be clear. I'm not saying that any of those things that those young men had to do wasn't important. I'm not diminishing or dismissing them at all to say that those things were not important. But what I am saying is that those things were not the most important thing at the time. God first and everything else will be in its proper place. Put first things first, because to put second things first is to lose both first and second things. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you, and we give you the glory and the honor and the praise, Lord God, for the word on today. We thank you, Lord God, for the parable, Lord God, of the great supper. We thank you, Lord God, for what you are teaching us, Lord God, through these earthly stories, O oh God, that's bringing about heavenly meanings, O oh God, through these short stories, Lord God, that's bringing about a spiritual truth. It, it demonstrates and it shows us, O oh God, who you are. It demonstrates and it shows us, O oh God, your nature, Lord God, and how you see things, Lord God, and how you are bringing, Lord God, the, the natural, Lord God, that we can relate to, Lord God, and, and showing us, O oh God, a, a spiritual truth, Lord God. We bless you, Lord God, for that. We honor you, Lord God, for that. We thank you, Lord God, that 
You love us in a way, Lord God, where we can look at something in the earth, Lord God, and, and you can generate that and cause that, Lord God, to become a spiritual truth in our lives, Lord God, where we can see it, Lord God, and become, oh God, who you have called us to be. And even now, Lord God, I just declare and decree, Lord God, that this body, the cup of salvation delivers church, Lord God, will never operate in excuses, Lord God, or complaints, Lord God about doing your work and your will, Lord God, as they are asked to, whether that's in prayer with you alone or whether that's the man or woman of God that's leading them comes forth to, to ask them to do a thing. Father, we bless you. We honor you and we magnify your name, Lord God, for this word on this morning. Father, it is in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for visiting us at Cup of Salvation Online. As you listen, we pray that God was able to reach you, teach you, and set you free. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear more of God's word. And if you'd like to sow into the work we're doing at Cup of Salvation, please go to cupofsalvation.org forward slash give. God bless you and we'll see you next time.